We take a break from our interview with Mr. Herman Guild Francis to join Jenna and Gaston, who is at the CSC Center. Hello, good evening to you, Jenna. Good evening, Tim. How are you? I'm all right. How about you? Um, I'm all right. Okay. What can you tell us with regard to the results following um, the biennial convention of the Civil Service Association? Well, what I can say is that there's celebration at the CSA because the word is that there's a new president, a new sheriff in town, and um, it's a female. Um, we are waiting for the final box from the town hall, but um, based on the margins and the individual boxes, it has been con well, somewhat confirmed that Yvonne is the new president, and I have her standing by. So I'm going to pass on the phone to her, and you can have a bit of a chat with her. Okay, thank you so much, um, Jenna. Um, by the way, Miss Yvonne Edwin is from the Department Hi, of evening. Fisheries. Um, good evening to you, Miss um, Edwin. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, um, you just heard from my colleague there, Jenna and Gaston, saying that unofficially have been declared president of the Civil Service Association. Tell us yes, a little bit about that. Unofficially, yes, because there is a major box in the town hall that has not been disclosed. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you right now who the other, um, the other members who, who won the other executive positions, but word on the ground, based on the celebration and the margins from the individual boxes, it has been unofficially declared. Do you know your margin of victory? Any idea? No, I cannot tell you the total number of votes because of the chair has not announced it officially, so I cannot tell you. But um, say, for example, in, in other areas, persons did indicate that the margins were wide enough. There were a little, a little over 2,000 voters, am I correct? There were 2,000. Mm -hmm. There are over 3,000 members. Mm -hmm. I, cannot have, I, I don't know the total count, mm -hmm. but I'm sure in the morning we would get a clear picture as to what the total count is, the percentage and the margin. Of, and especially for the various other executive positions. Okay, unofficially you're the president of the CSA. What did it take, if that's the case? Repeat your question, yes. sorry. What did it take to become the president of the CSA? And we what want to does repeat. It take? Yes, what did it took, sorry. What did it took? Oh, what did it took? <laughs> well, it, it took me first offering myself off to serve and, of course, to get the support of the members because they're the ones who went out to vote and made, and made their voice be heard. There was a lot of and it's really mm -hmm. coming from the members because they, as much as um, my campaign was based on change that I, saw that I felt the CSA needed, they too had the same view and they went out and voted me in. And you're claiming that the CSA was politicized over the last two years. What would cause you to come to that conclusion? Based on what has been happening in the news, the sides and the division that that almost took over CSA, it is clear that, that, that the political division was, was very clear. And CSA is, is an organization, of course, you, you made up of, of workers, and of course they would have their own parties that they would affiliate to. But what we saw was a division, almost you know, a clear-cut division of who was what. And I, I, I never signed a form that indicated where or who I voted for, and I, I think that it, it's a very unfair way to, for persons to now see the CSA. What gives you the impression that this will change under your leadership? Under my leadership, I intend to bring members together, to unite members, because that is what a union is established for. So I will do my utmost best. I am ready to work, and uh, my job starts tomorrow. One, I am sure others will agree it's a big task ahead, but I am willing to do just that. That's why I went into this race. Those who are pessimistic will tell you that the damage is irreparable. Do you share that view? Say that again. I did not get that the question. Persons who are pessimistic right now will uh -huh. tell you that the, the damage has been done. It's irreparable because those who lost, the supporters of those who lost, who might have been political, Mm -hmm. I am sure that they will not easily gravitate to your side. They also will be very suspicious of yourself as president of the CSA. Of course, you will get varying views. But I think until we meet as an organization that was lacking, members will not engage. And I think that would be the first thing that you would want to be the order of business, is to call your members and get their feeling of how they want you to move forward. It, it really cannot be about me and what I want. 
I may have my own view, but I'm now here to represent the workers and to represent the members of GSC. And, and my mandate will stem from that. And finally, you do not want to do anything that would appear to be political. Don't you think that sometimes your actions going forward is very early, your actions going forward could be misconstrued as being political one way or the other in support of one party or the other, considering right now that we are just seemingly a few months away from general elections from a general in election? Saint, in Saint Lucia. Uh -huh. Persons will always have their view and they will assume where your, your heart lies, but I think that that is not the focus of, that is not the focus. We just need to concentrate on the issues at hand and try to resolve them. And like I said, the members should be your focus in anything that you do. So that, with that moving forward, I, I cannot see how politics should come into to, to that scheme of things. You just need to be focused and engage your members, get what they want. Of course, you'll have persons who may have voted for other persons and, and, and they were not successful. But at the end of the day, they are all members too. And so you have to respect people's opinion and do just that. Work for the members of the union. Final comments from you, ma'am? Excited and ready to work. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> all right. You just heard there from Miss Yvonne Edwin. We are hearing unofficially she is the new president of the Civil Service Association, and that is following the biennial convention of the CSA, which took place today. The voting started at 8 o'clock this morning and concluded at 5 o'clock this afternoon. A number of other positions, um, people who vied for those positions, first vice president, second vice president, third VP, treasurer, assistant secretary slash treasurer, secretary, and also three trustees were to be elected as well. Um, but we're hearing again, unofficially, Ms. Yvonne Edwin is the president of the St. Lucia Civil Service Association. By the way, the first president of the CSA was Mr. D.F. Mayers, an employee of the Treasury Department, and the Civil Service Association was established in the year of 1951. It was formed in the late 1940s and operated informally, but it was registered on May the 16th of 1951. If you're just joining us once again, and officially the news is Miss Yvonne Edwin is the new president of the St. Lucia Civil Service Association. We hope to have more during our various broadcasts right here on this station. Back to Newsmaker Live and my guest, once again, Mr. Herman Gil de Francis. Uh, we'll just um, focus a little bit on the issues relating to the Forensic Lab and we'll take a break later and then we'll be taking your calls. The Forensic Lab, um, it has not been functioning for quite some time now. And just recently we heard from the Minister with Responsibility um, for national security by saying that it's put, being put now to limited use. What say you to this particular situation and the fact that it could have happened during the reign of a United Workers Party administration where um, certain things were, its operations were um, basically to a large extent compromised mm -hmm. resulting in its closure. Any lessons from this for you if you become the island's next Home Affairs and National Security Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Tim, the Forensic Lab is a very, very, very important um, department in the fight against crime. Some of the things that happened at the Forensic Lab should never have happened. The fact that the electronic doors, which allows persons to enter by using a, a key, was not functional for months. The CCTV cameras were operational but not recorded. And for the minister to tell me that he did not know that these things were not functional is an indictment on him. As an important department like the forensic lab, the minister should have had regular visits with the security at the facility to make sure that everything was in order. He did not do that. They only suspected that after the lab was compromised. Um, 
We then took 43 samples and sent it to Bermuda, to a lab called Helix. And um, it, cost, it cost us for over $400,000. Now, the lab was compromised because drugs were removed, cocaine, and people's choice flower was placed in its place, in its stead. An investigation, the minister said, was due and was in progress. That investigation has been completed. The minister is yet to tell the public what are the findings of this investigation. So to just say that you're going to reopen the lab and just do the, analy the analyzing of drugs cannot be right. The public needs to know whether anybody is responsible for, for the, the, the um, breach in protocol. They need to know what happened to the employees there, whether anybody is under suspicion, whether those persons are still employed, and um, whether these persons actually undertook the polygraph test before they were employed. All these things need to be explained to the public before you can even think of reopening the lab. What we'll do right now is to put the telephone number on screen so that you can call with your questions and the comments for my guest. Once again, he is Mr. Herman Gil Francis, a member of the main opposition United Workers Party and also Shadow Minister of Home Affairs. So we have a telephone number on screen. Please call right now and pose your question. By the way, we have a call in line already. Good evening. This is Newsmaker Live. Go ahead if you contribution, caller. Yes, good night. Hi, good evening to you, caller. Good night. Yes. Good night. Good night, sir. I just pray to God you win the election because I know you'll do a good job. So keep on holding on. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you so much. We continue to take your calls once again for my guest, Mr. Herman Gale de Francis. Please go ahead. Good evening to you. Good evening. Hi, good evening to you, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening to your guest. Good evening, ma'am. Mr. Francis, I think you should be honest and tell St. Lucians what were you looking for from the Labour Party and you did not get, and then you turn to the UWPs. Because I don't think they're trusting you, they're watching you under a microscope. Bye bye. Right, thank, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you much for, for the comment. Um, like I said, yes, I wanted to be the candidate for the Ansari Canaries um, constituency. The constituency group chose me. The Prime Minister decided that he didn't want me, so he chose Pep. We now see the results. I still worked with Pep, and um, at the end of the day, almost three years into the reign of the St. Lucia Labour Party, I decided to leave because I did not see anything happening for the people of Ansari Canaries. And I think that the people of Ansari Canaries needs better representation. Now the call. Good evening. Thanks for holding on. Go ahead for contribution, caller. Yeah, I want to make a point. Go ahead, please. Um, uh, I think Mr. Herman Gil Francis touched on it. In St. Lucia, if you were to set a common entrance question paper and say that the Prime Minister must be the Minister of Finance, 99.9% .9 of the students will say true. That is false. What happened is that Sir John, in the talks at Lancaster House in London, during the period 1978 to 79, insisted and had it put in uh, as, as an entrenched clause that the Minister of Finance must be elected. Now, that to me doesn't make sense. I'll say why. You look at bigger economies like Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, they take the best brain. And Guyana. And Guyana, and Guyana. too. Look at what happened to Sir John when he came back in 2006. The obvious choice for finance was a, 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 a senator in the person of Osbert Duvay. But he couldn't touch him because it came back to haunt him. So I think this is a very salient and valid point made by Mr. Herman Gil Francis. And I think that must be revisited. Okay, I was, look, I was doing some research a while ago, and I was looking at it, Sir John Compton. Sir Adam Louisi, legal backgrounds, mm -hmm. Neville Snack, legal backgrounds. Mm -hmm. When Mikey Pilgrim came on board temporarily, he, he took it, of, of course. Mm -hmm. He has a background in, in finance. Then we had uh, uh, Sir Von Ruiz, only authentic person I could see in my view who took it. 
Dr. Anthony came back again. There was talk this last time around. Emma Hippolyte would have gotten it. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very, very valid point. And I think the, the reform process that, was take, that, that took place under the um, leadership of the late Madam Justice Dovey, I mean, we, we, we have to revisit it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for calling, sir. Once again, we continue to take your calls. This is Newsmaker Live. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening to you, ma'am. Good, good evening, ma'am. Good evening to your guest. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, when you do get your, your resources and your manpower in order to, to do the, the white-collar crimes, I am hoping that the first investigation you will do is the one of the misappropriated funds of the Taiwanese money. I would, I would hope you would do that first. Okay, so but don't you think, don't you think, Kola, that the onus, don't you think the onus was on the Senusha Labour Party to have dealt with this particular matter? And I believe they are in the process of doing that. No, but, but he, I mean, we are under, Kola, we are under heels of a general election. You tell me that the SLP is still in the process of doing that? Yes, among other things, Timothy. Mm. But we're looking for handwriting experts and so on. So I'm hoping he will be the one to and go you said, and, and you said we, it. right? You said we. I yes, Timothy. Okay, you are part. You are part of the uh, um, apparatus I'm a part, of the. I'm a citizen. I'm a part of the country. That's okay. what I am. I thought you were Thank part you. of the apparatus of the Senusha Labour Party. Um, but uh, is her um, issue is legitimate in terms of whether the Nyugas Party will be dealing with that particular issue. But I also felt that it was appropriate to ask whether what the Senusha Labour Party had also done about this particular matter. We have a call. Good evening. This is Newsmaker Live. You're on the air. Yeah, good night to him. Hi, good night to you, and sir. Good night to Mr. Francis. Good night, sir. Mr. Francis said that as long as criminals recognize that um, crime is being solved, then the level of crime should be Continuous. should go down. Yes. I believe you on that. But those countries where countries where crime is being solved, they pay a lot of attention to CCTV. Mm -hmm. What is your view on the, CC, the role of CCTV in our country, and what efforts will you put in to ensure that CCTV plays a crucial role in solving crime in this country? Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for the, for the question. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, that, that is the way to go. Um, but CCTV is, is, is a very expensive um, form of, of, of detecting crime. But it is necessary, and um, we must try as much as possible to use that technology. Um, again, we can use the cameras and so on, but like I just said with the lab, that the cameras must be functional. It is pointless that you have cameras all over the, the, the city and, and other areas, and they're not functional. They must be functional. So I agree with you 100% that we need to use all means available so as to, for us to deal with crime. Good evening, God, if you contribution, Connor. Thank you so much for holding on. Good evening, Tim. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Ermin. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Listening <laughs> to you yes. is, you know, like a breath of fresh air in a stale room. Thank you, My sir. My brother, I yes. wish and hope that you would attain the position that you're looking for so you could bring some understanding and some clarity, you know, in, our, in, in, in this our political system. The gentleman that we have here, he looks half asleep and he looks as though he's expecting somebody to walk behind him with a gun at any time and I think somebody should put him to bed. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> right, thank and you so much for again, I mean. Thank you very much, sir. But let's go back to the earlier question that was asked by the caller mm -hmm. before the last, that the Taiwanese funds. Yes. Would the United States Party administration deal with that issue as well? Um, 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 Tim, obviously, if one of the first questions you need to ask is that whether the, the, the Taiwanese government is willing to put, to, to to delay this matter. They would, have been, they would have been the persons aggrieved. So somewhere along the line, these persons must come and make a complaint and say, hello, I gave you a certain amount of money to do a particular job, and you misuse the funds. OK, I need, a, I need accountability there. If that is done, then you can proceed. But the Taiwanese has never said that they are dissatisfied with the manner in which the, the, the money was used. So where, where do you go? Secondly, the, 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 the prime minister then um, formed a, a little team of persons to send to investigate the, the towns and village councils and so on. 
But did he have the power to do that? Isn't it supposed to be the Auditor General or somebody like that that has to, to initiate these sort of things? I mean, I, I, I'm not that <laughs> big a lawyer, but I, I w you need to ask these questions. Whether the Prime Minister did have the power to um, appoint these people to do the investigations in the Tongan Village Councils. We have another call. Good evening. Go ahead with your contribution, caller. Good evening, Mr. Hi. Good evening to you, ma'am. Yeah, a question for Ms. Edwin. I would like to, I would like her to tell her members no, why no, no. is I think it should be, <laughs> why don't you pose a question to Mr. Herman Gil Francis? <laughs> um, okay, but I'll, I'll allow you to yeah, go ahead. Please, yeah, go ahead yeah. with your contribution. Yes, I would mm. like Ms. Edwin to tell her members why is it that it was all the presiding officers um, that um, were that were working at the different polling stations today were only Labour Party supporters? <laughs> okay, I think you, you're reading a lot into this. Um, I don't know if you just could see somebody and make a determination as to whether they are supporters of the St. Lucia Labour Party or the United Workers Party or whether that will have a, the out, uh, an outcome of um, uh, that particular exercise which took place at the Civil Service Association. I don't think we should be questioning anybody's um, integrity as far as this issue is concerned. We have another call. Good evening. This is Newsmaker Live. You're on the air. Good evening, Tim. Hi. Good evening nice to you, sir. Nice to see you back home. And Thank you so much. Francis. Thank you very much, Good sir. Good evening to you, Good sir. Good evening. You made a comment concerning Mr. Fletcher, mm -hmm. and you're smart on. You're smart on there. Um, I think, indeed, we need to see um, persons of that nature being utilized or being put to, to work, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And they, too, must want it, of course. Yeah. It would be um, quite, um, how could I say it, um, um, interesting if your party um, does gain the, um, you could say, position of being the next government, mm -hmm. that he's invited back to that post. Um, uh, given what you have said, um, it would only put, uh, you could say, ice cream on the cake, mm -hmm. um, isolate on the cake, sorry, um, you know, in that sense. Because I do believe that um, there are persons like himself um, out there, and you need to be able to utilize mm -hmm. these persons because they work for us, the yes. government is a reflection of the people, right. or should be a reflection of the people, working on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. And um, indeed, that would be interesting. I hold you to that, and, mm -hmm. if, and when your party does come through, I would love to see such a uh, revelation. That would be quite interesting. I do wish you all the best. Tim, have a blessed one. Thank you so much for calling, sir. Mm -hmm. We await your calls. Once again, Newsmaker Live mm -hmm. on DBS Television. We have another call. Good evening. Go ahead your contribution, caller. <coughs> Hello. Hi. Good evening to you. Good night. Good Hi. Night. Good evening. Good night. I'm Mr. Francis. Yes. Since you, you said that you were a member of the Labour Party, mm -hmm. you left because they didn't give you what they had to give you. No, no, no. no. I didn't leave because they didn't give me what I had to give you. What you did? Right. I left the Labour Party, like I told you, because but I live in the constituency of Ansari Canneries, and this constituency has been neglected and I took an active part in the elections okay making sure that persons voted for the Labour Party and I'm being held responsible in that constituency so, for hello, the work so I did for the Labour Party. Before they did, so you went to the, the United Workers Party? Yes I went to the United now, Workers Party because I think that I can make a contribution here. So if it doesn't get what mm -hmm. the what Mr. Alan Shafi promised mm -hmm. you Will you leave and go to some other party? Not at all. This will be the end of my political career. Oh, yeah? I don't think so. Well, anyway, that's, bye, good that's, night. Your, that's, Thank you so that's much. your opinion. <laughs> but like I said, I mean, I, you know, persons are, are making this thing that Minister of, of, of Home Affairs and so on as something that is so appealing that this is all I'm, I'm looking for. I am, I am painfully employed, Tim. I'm happy where I am. I work with some of the best people that I've ever met, my GM, my managing director, my financial controller, I have a whale of a time at, at, at my workplace. It's going to be a difficult decision for me to make eventually to leave that, uh, so that, that company to, to, to be a minister. You know, when you look at the re remunerations of, of a minister, you know, and the headache that is going to be there. But I want to try and see if I can serve my country. So if I am called, I will make the sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that I'll have to make there. Another call. Good evening. Thanks for holding on. 
Good evening. Uh, Hi. Good, Good evening to you. Evening, sir. I'd like to say uh, I've always respected you as an elder, and I um, I, can't, I respect your... They should make you sports minister, actually. You still hold several <laughs> records in the <laughs> No, no, I think all the records have been broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I held it for a long time, but they've been broken now. I tried myself to break some of them, but I didn't <laughs> like improved, but, but um, I hold you in high esteem. I mean, your guy I've looked up to it from the same area. Yes. I'll let you know where I am at some point. Okay. I, um, I think you do a fantastic job. I mean, your academic career and your policing career has been almost untarnished. Um, I think you're a perfect man for the job. You understand the police. You understand law enforcement. You understand some aspects of legal, the legal work, which mm -hmm. I know you went to study law at some yes, point. I have I'm good about that tonight. Mm -hmm. And you, you're quite a good man. And it, it's a democracy. You're free to go into any party you want. If you don't love, if you don't think it's working out for you on the red side, you go to the yellow side. If you don't think it's working out on the yellow side, you go to the blue side. No, no, so no, I don't no, understand. No, no, no blue side for me. I know. <laughs> I'll be but home. I'm just making a point that, yes. you know, you, it's a democracy. If you, mm -hmm. if you went on to the labor side from the yellow side, they'd welcome you with open arms. They wouldn't like, be criticizing exactly. you on TV. Yeah. The hack patrol wouldn't be criticizing mm -hmm. you. So I, I believe you. I trust you. I, I, I hold you in high esteem. And I think you'll do a fantastic job in any ministry, sports or home affairs. Well, I can't talk for finance, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Do, just do your best, man, serve your country, and forget about the hacks, because they'll always be hacks, they'll always push their agenda, and you you know, you have to stand up to them, because if you look at Richard Frederick, for instance, all the things they said about him, when they got in power, did they do anything? Not a thing. Not a thing. Anyway, yeah. just do your best, buddy. I support you. Good night. Yeah, thank, thank you, so you much very for much. But it's interesting that you, you mentioned my, my friend Richard Frederick. Um, because I, I did make a statement that um, on the Sunday meeting at, at Grand Riviere and uh, he, has he has taken me to task for it. But Richard must understand that I was not attacking him personally. I was trying to make a point that this uh, Prime Minister of ours, Kenny Anthony, that that was his modus operandi, that he attacks people and then later on he befriends them. Um, you could look at Von Lu but, uh, um, Dr. Von Lewis, Sir Von Lewis in 2001. And you can understand, now he has made, he has made Dr. Lewis sir. So, then in 2006, Richard was the, the, the bane of, 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 the, of the Prime Minister. Now, you know, the, the friends again. You know, this, this, now, this time around is Alan Chastney. So I was just trying to point out the hypocrisy of, 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 of politicians. When they want to get certain things, they utilize persons they think can assist them in, in winning an election. So I wasn't attacking him personally, and if he wants to take it that way, that's his business. We have a final call on nine. Good evening. This is Newsmaker Live. Hello. I think we've lost the call. Yes. Yeah, good yeah. evening to you. You're a final caller. Good evening to you. Good evening yeah, to you, good sir. Good evening, sir. I'll be a guest. Thank you very much. Welcome, my man. Thank you. All right. Um, you said about the police force. Then... Well Colourful, whatever well reason, is sounding a little bit muffled. Yeah? I don't know if you're a little away from the mouthpiece or something. Like, mm, go I ahead. Said, you, you spoke about the police force. Mm. Yes. Um, what we, in the event that you become the, uh, which one again, in charge of the police force, mm -hmm. um, in terms of discipline, what would you see happening to the police who are Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. A little bit yeah, well, inaudible by getting. Yeah, I, I think I, you, I get the point that you officers. you're talking yeah. about discipline in the police force. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that too has, has fallen very 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 low. Um, I I see police officers walking on the street and they will see the, the commissioner or gazette officer. And they, they won't even salute. Um, I get stories that um, uh, a senior officer in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a particular department speaking to even SPCs, and the SPC is telling that, that particular person that I'm not working with you, you can't tell me what to do, and those sort of things. You know, um, that, that wouldn't happen. You know, um, people leaving work and going home at any time whatsoever, not even informing the, the, the officers or the SOs that they, they're leaving and... and no, no, when it comes to the discipline of the police force, I think it has, it has fallen. Final comments from mm -hmm. you, sir. Okay, Tim, I, 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 I want to thank you for having me here.
But I just want to leave with one thing. Um, in social psychology, there's something called the confirmation bias. And it says, do you like it better when your views, when the views you hold are confirmed or when they're refuted? The answer is obvious. We strongly prefer to have our views confirmed. When this bias is in operation, it places us in a kind of closed cognitive system in which only evidence that confirms our existing view and beliefs gets inside. Other information is sometimes noticed but it's quickly rejected as false. And I just want to tell my St. Lucia people that at the end of the day, all of us want the best for St. Lucia. And if a party is doing something that is not right, then we're supposed to be able to um, criticize constructively and learn from, 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 from it. Um, I can give you an example with the, with the CIP. Um, this doctor has just made some, some comments. I think that I'm not too sure what his motivation is, but some of the comments seem to be genuine comments. That when you have a place like um, St. Kitts and um, Green, uh, not Grenada, but um, Antigua, that our premium on, on, on getting citizenship is less than Antigua and St. Kitts. When St. Lucia seemed to be an op a place where we are far ahead of these countries. So I think our premium on our citizenship should be higher. Um, so these are sort of things that we need to take, and if there is a possibility of strengthening that CIP program, we need to do it. But again, I want to, self, I want to thank you, and um, I am there. I'm going to try my best, my very best to see that um, the United Workers' Party win this election, because I think for St. Lucia to go forward now, we need a new government. Thanks so much, Mr. Herman Gil Francis, for being my guest on this evening's News Make Alive. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast and contributing via your calls. If it's Wednesday, it's News Make Alive. Time now for the clip that beat. Hi, I'm Alex Buske, and you're watching Street Vibes. Today, the people speak to an open mic. I would like to make an appeal to the nation to our pastors I recognize that we are presently using a term renouncing the devil and I listen to the radio station every Sunday morning there is a lady using the term renouncing I was in Sufre last week Wednesday and a pastor was in Smoke Hill in Sufre using the word renouncing. We are in an election year and um, we are seeking prayer, we are seeking the Almighty and it is the wrong season for pastors to be going in different corners and radio announcers or, or, or radio personnel to be using the term renouncing the devil. The word should be denouncing the devil. And in this election year, we are going to denounce the devil and don't renounce him. Please, all pastors, use the word denouncing. In case you have not used your dictionary, it is denouncing the devil and not renouncing him. <laughs> Once again, that's the broadcast. Here's the very good evening. My name is Timothy Polio. See you next time.